Hi guys, thanks for joining the webcast today. My name is Gilliam Elliott. Today I want to go over the benefits of taking the Certified Medical Travel Agent course. And then at the end of the presentation, I'm going to introduce you guys to two students who've previously taken the course. They're going to share their experience. It's going to be Ruby Madrigal and Dennis Patino. So I want to go ahead and get into the presentation right now. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is what medical tourism is. And medical tourism is obtaining medical care outside of one's immediate community. A lot of people think of medical tourism as international, uh, international travel, getting medical treatment done. And that is the most popular form, but there's also uh, domestic medical tourism, where people travel from one city to another city within, within their state, or they travel to, from state to state within their country. Um, so there's different forms of it. Dental tourism is a large, uh, a large segment of medical tourism, and it's a form of medical tourism. And it's, it's, uh, it, a lot of people couple it with uh, their vacation. So if a person's going to uh, travel to another country, a lot of times it's easy to just uh, get a medical treatment done because there isn't a long recovery time, and uh, and and you can pretty much be up and running within hours or days um, after getting a, a procedure done. It's also uh, less liability for the patient. Um, it's not going to be any major complications after getting a dental procedure. Um, also, uh, it's not going to be any uh, loss of life like there could potentially be uh, with a major surgery. Um, so it's less liability for the patient and it's less liability uh, for the medical tourism facilitator as well. A lot of patients uh, from developed countries travel to less developed countries. Um, we see this a lot with Australians who go to Thailand or here in North America. A lot of North Americans uh, go to Latin America. Um, and it's really because of the large cost savings that they can obtain by traveling to a, another country. And it's, it's not uncommon from someone here in North America to go to Latin America and save 50 percent or 80 percent. And I've even seen up to 90 percent. Um, wellness tourism, it's another form of medical tourism as well. Wellness tourism is travel associated with the pursuit of maintaining or enhancing one's personal well-being. Um, it represents 14% uh, of the to total global uh, tourism revenue, and it's growing about 9.9% annually, and it's nearly a, a half a trillion dollar market. Um, and then also it's becoming uh, almost as common as, as an annual vacation. And the reason this is, is that uh, in years past, people associated wellness travel with uh, rich people, with wealthy people. Now it's becoming readily available to, to everyday people. And especially after COVID, a lot of people are trying to find ways to enhance or maintain uh, their well-being. Um, why do people travel for healthcare? Uh, people travel for a whole host of reasons. The main reasons we see is cost savings, which we, we covered a second ago, and also better quality of care. Uh, maybe the healthcare system in their in their uh, home country isn't the best, so they opt to do medical tourism and, and get a high level of, uh, of care a, in another country. Um, another reason why we see people travel is to avoid long waiting lines. Um, sometimes uh, in certain countries, it uh, it takes months for them to get a, a procedure done, um, so they opt to do medical tourism and and speed up the process. Um, medical treatment uh, it, for international patients, it, it can be it can be anywhere, right? Um, and they can get it anywhere. But the most sought after treatments is cosmetic and plastic surgery, dentistry, weight loss surgery, infertility treatment, um, orthopedic surgery, um, heart procedures, stem cell therapy, and cancer treatment. What is a medical tourism facilitator? Uh, a medical tourism facilitator provides assistance to medical travelers from A to Z. Um, they set up conference calls before the treatment's done, before the patient flies over, sees to get the treatment done, after the pa patient gets home, uh, maybe they need pre-op uh, uh, care, so that they set up a conference call with the overseas doctor. Um, they also minimize the risk and vet healthcare providers. So anybody can uh, get a cheap procedure overdone, uh, overseas, but the, the, the key and the reason why uh, patients uh, seek out medical tourism facilitators is because they want to get a, a, a quality procedure from a reputable doctor. Um, they don't want to just pay uh, money and get a botched procedure. So as a medical tourism facilitator, they're looking for you to vet these healthcare providers and making sure they meet a certain standards of care. Um, also, facilitators are a single point of contact for patients. Um, so since you are uh, such a central part of setting up the medical trip, 
um, they should be able to reach out to you for any flight details, um, any uh, doctor's appointment, anything that has to do with their medical trip, uh, trip, they should be able to reach out to you and, uh, and find out that information. So you're one single point of contact for the, uh, for the medical traveler. Um, also, um, reduce the language uh, barrier. Um, you know, guys, you want to make sure that when you're coordinating these trips that somebody on staff at the overseas healthcare facility, that they speak the pa patient's native language or that at least they have a translator there on staff. That way, if the patient has any concerns, uh, if they have any pain that they want to communicate or, or, or anything, they can, they can be heard out by someone who speaks the na native language and they feel more comfortable during the process. The transfer of medical records, uh, you want to make sure that you're transferring these medical records uh, a secure way, making sure that uh, uh, that they don't get in the hands of somebody else outside of you and the patient uh, in the healthcare provider uh, overseas. Um, you want to make sure you have a secure line that you're um, that you're sending these uh, these uh, transcripts and these medical records uh, to these overseas doctors. Why become a medical tourism facilitator? Um, one is to become your own boss. One reason why I'm passionate about working with medical tourism facilitators and uh, medical tourism startups is because uh, they have a vision of, of what they want to accomplish, uh, a business that they want to build. And I feel like it's my duty to uh, take the resources that I have, the knowledge, the experience, and help them achieve that vision that they're, that they're looking to accomplish and bring that vision to pass. Uh, another reason why people want to become a medical tourism facilitator is because you don't have to start out in some lavish uh, office. You don't have to have a brick and mortar uh, building. You can start out from a spare bedroom in your home and then build up to having that office space. Um, and then another reason is that you're helping people access high quality health care. Right. Some people, uh, a lot of these people are, are paying out of pocket. Right. They're self-paying patients. And so they need to find affordable health care. Uh, and sometimes in their home country, health care is very expensive. They can't afford it. So they look. Uh, they seek out other countries to try to find more affordable health care and high quality health care. Since you're vetting these health care providers, you're looking at their track record, you're making sure they have the necessary uh, certifications and accreditations, then they're, they're spending, they're saving money, and then they're also getting a high level uh, health care uh, procedure. So that's that's the good reason uh, to become a medical tourism facilitator. And you're solving problems, right? Um, health care is a problem in a lot of different countries around the world, and you're solving that problem by connecting them with quality uh, healthcare providers, and you're joining a, a, a growing industry. Medical tourism is growing by 25% each year, um, and between 11 and 14 million people travel for healthcare treatment each year, and I've seen figures up to 16 million, and the market value is uh, $439 billion, and it's projected to go to $3 trillion by 2025, so it's definitely an emerging uh, industry that's growing. Now, COVID-19, uh, the pandemic, it has affected medical tourism and it's affected these numbers. Um, but the good news is that we're through the thick of it. Um, global, uh, global Data, which is a data consulting company, um, they estimate that the medical tourism market will fully rebound to pre-pandemic levels by 2022, after which it will experience pre-pandemic growth. And we're already starting to see that, guys. We're really starting to see a spike in medical tourism again. Uh, but you don't want to wait until the industry is in full swing. You want to start the company right now. Put all your, um, you know, put all your resources and everything in order right now. So when the industry does come back, you're in a perfect position uh, to take advantage of it. What is the value of a certification in the medical travel industry? Uh, specifically talking about the uh, certified medical travel agent uh, course, it's the only course in the industry that that that's made for startups. Um, it helps you step by step start a medical tourism company from scratch. And most people who take the certification have no experience in medical tourism. Um, so it's going to teach you best practices. It's going to eliminate the trial and error phase. Um, I've seen so many facilitators who spend months and months trying to figure out problems that are in this course that they can simply take a course, invest in their self, invest in their business, um, and, 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 and find out the solution to these problems uh, in real time uh, in, in a faster time. And so it really eliminates that trial and error period. Um, also, it shows you what works and what doesn't work, right? There's proven methods that work in the medical tourism industry when starting a business. This certification outlines those for you. Uh, and then it also sets you apart from your competitors. That's why a lot of people who have uh, medical travel agencies and medical tourism facilitation agencies take this course. They might already be established, but they're looking for ways to separate their self from the competition. And a certification is a great way to do that. 
Um, it makes you stand out amongst your competitors and it shows uh, that you hold yourself to a certain standard and that a third party has validated your company um, and, and patients love to see that, right? It's nothing like a patient going to your website, going to your social media and seeing that certification seal. It really makes a great first impression. And then also it decreases your, uh, your risk. Um, the certification goes over how to vet uh, healthcare providers who you wanna put in your network. Um, it also goes over how to coordinate trips that, uh, that lessens your exposure. Um, so it, it goes over a host of risk, risk mitigation and risk management um, uh, tools and resources and strategies. Um, also, um, you're gonna learn proven marketing techniques. Um, there's marketing techniques that yield uh, absolute, uh, absolute great results, and you're gonna find out what those are through the certification. And this course is made for facilitators around the world. It gives examples from countries all around the world, but no matter where you are in the world, if you're a facilitator, this course will be able to help you start your company. All right, course topics. Um, this isn't all the course topics, but I want to put some of the key ones here. Um, introduction to global healthcare. It goes over medical tourism facts and figures, the role of a medical tourism facilitator. Um, as I said, marketing strategies, proven marketing strategies, um, revenue models for facilitators, wellness tourism, uh, medical tourism broken down into actual steps. So you're gonna go, it's gonna walk you through step by step the medical tourism process and show you how, uh, how to engage that, that different step and how to make sure uh, that you're providing the best uh, patient experience and the best experience possible. It's also gonna go over COVID-19, how to partner with healthcare providers, uh, risk management, uh, communicating effectively with prospects, um, how to attract international patients, as well as before and after care. What comes with the online certification course? Um, with this course, you're gonna access, you're gonna be able to access the course uh, and study material 24 hours a day. Um, it's 12 hours of learning and training. Um, there's 16 easy to follow modules. Also, each, uh, each module has a quiz at, at the end of it, so you can retain the information that you learned from chapter to chapter. It also has a digital workbook that's built into the online platform, and there's 100 multiple choice questions between the quizzes and the final exam. Um, we engage you multiple different ways. Um, it has training videos, uh, charts, graphs, infographics. We really just try to drive home the point of how to set up the business, and we really walk you through each step and we make sure that uh, you retain all the information that you uh, that you consume during the during the course. Um, the global, uh, uh, the facilitator gold membership, this is our all inclusive program. It does include the certification as well, but if you wanna take, take it a step further um, outside of the certification, this is the program for you. Um, it comes with pre-made contracts. It comes with, as I said, the certification. It comes with mentorship, patient leads, uh, sample business plan, income and expense worksheets, um, a marketing plan, um, email templates that you can send to your patients, uh, telephone scripts that you can read verbatim when talking to patients on the phone, uh, practical tools, manuals, uh, templates. It also comes with a host of discounts. It comes with a discount on website templates as well as custom design websites. Um, also uh, on our marketing services, you get a 20% discount. And then we try to promote you guys uh, as certified members and as uh, facilitated gold members. We have a directory um, and each member, they get an exclusive listing on that directory. It lists all your uh, company information, your telephone number, email address. Uh, and we, we have two directories, one on makemedicaltrip.com as well as one on medicaltourismbusiness.com. And these directories, patients go to them when they're uh, looking for medical tourism services. And then as being uh, you by you being a member, uh, you'll be uh, you'll be listed on those directories. And it's a one year membership and you can renew it annually. This is one of our members from Turkey. Uh, she's just uh, going over how, how she felt like the, the uh, certification helped her as well as the tools and the contracts and the documents that we provided to her. Now, you can start a medical tourism agency a lot of different ways. I've seen people launch successful medical tourism agencies this way uh, for the most part. Typically, they get certified because the, certify, the certification goes over every as aspect of medical tourism, and it shows you how to set up the business plan, the website, the contracts. It shows you how to partner with overseas healthcare providers. So it really it's the foundation uh, of the company. But typically, I see people who are successful start off by getting the certification, uh, then getting, uh, doing their business plan, uh, creating their website, creating their contracts, and then partnering with over, overseas healthcare providers, and then going ahead and starting marketing and recruiting patients from that point. Uh, we went over contracts briefly, but our contracts is one of our most popular uh, benefits of membership, so I want to go into a little bit more detail. Um, these pre-made uh, contracts, 
Um, they're made specifically for medical tourism facilitators. Some of the contracts that comes uh, comes with this membership is patient waivers. Um, these patient waiver agreements, they're going to uh, they're going to basically uh, let the patient know the risk and benefits uh, that come along with getting a medical trip, and the patient acknowledges the risk and benefits as well. Um, they also they also say through these agreements that they understand um, you know that you you facilitate trips you are not a medical provider you won't be providing any medical advice um, so it really just distinguishes you from the uh, overseas healthcare provider so if any litigation does take place they understand what you provided during the trip and what you didn't provide uh, during the medical trip and that's going to lessen your liability as well. Um, uh, facilitator agreements between the healthcare provider uh, and the facilitator. These agreements, uh, they basically go over your payment structure, um, how you're going to be paid, whether it's commission, whether it's base pay. Um, it goes over how you're going to be paid, when you're going to be paid. Is it going to be a week after the procedure is done? Is it going to be 15 days after the procedure is done when you receive the funds? What's the time frame? It outlines that. And it also outlines what you expect from your overseas healthcare provider. Um, you expect uh, a certain level of doctor to be working with your uh, with your clients. Uh, you expect uh, somebody to be on staff that speaks your patient's native, native language or a translator. All the things that you demand from your overseas healthcare provider, and these definitely help with, uh, with lessening your liability as well. Um, the other one is pre-screening and medical history forms. These forms are what you want to send to your patient first. Um, this is going to get a, a medical history of the patient, right? Uh, what medications they're currently taking, um, do they have any current ailments? Uh, do they have a, a history of certain diseases in their family? You're going to get an overview. Uh, you're going to get a health profile of, of this patient. Maybe maybe they're high risk. Maybe you don't want to work with them. You uh, you want to find this out in the beginning, right? Maybe they need to wait until they get the uh, wait to get the procedure done at a later date. Uh, maybe they need a physical done before they get this procedure done overseas. This medical history form and these pre-screening documents, they're going to find that out for you at the beginning. And we've taken it even a step further than just the pre-made contracts and the risk mitigation tools. We also partner with a complication insurance company. Um, so they provide complication insurance. As a member, we can connect you with them as well uh, to make sure that you're being safe at every aspect of this trip. Um, website creation is another popular uh, membership benefit that we provide. Um, it, it, and I just want to go over some of the things you want to make sure you have on your on your website. So you want to have a, a, a contact form on each page, just making sure no matter what page the, the patient lands on, that contact form is available for them and it's readily available for them so they can fill it out and reach out to you. Um, also, chat functionality you want to have on your website. Some patients, when they first land on your website, they may have a quick question. They can they can send you a quick chat through your website. It's convenient for them. Um, you want to have a link to your WhatsApp. Um, you know, some people they they're very comfortable with WhatsApp. They don't mind getting on there, sending a message. Um, so WhatsApp's a good feature to have on on your uh, on your website. You just want to make it convenient for the patient. No matter what form of communication they prefer, you want to make sure you have that on your website. Uh, and you also want to make sure the website's mobile friendly. A lot of people build websites, but they don't realize that people view their website on websites on different devices. Somebody might be, view your website on a cell phone and it's going to look completely different if they build, view it on a laptop. So you want to make sure that no matter what device uh, they view your website on, it shows up professionally. Um, also, you want to make sure you have a language translation button. Uh, a lot of patients speak multiple languages. Sometimes they're more comfortable speaking one language versus another one. You want to make sure you have every option so they can consume your content on your website as convenient as possible. Um, also, a clear call to action. You want to have uh, uh, buttons on your website that make uh, make patients want to respond. Things like get a free quote, uh, things like contact us today, things that make them want to reach out to you and make them want to take action while they're on your website. Um, also, all this is covered in the certification even more in depth, and also we provide this service as well, like I said earlier. And so now I want to take a few minutes uh, to introduce you to the uh, two students that I spoke about early, earlier, uh, Dennis and Ruby. Uh, I'm going to take a few minutes to add them on the program and just ask them some questions and kind of get that feedback so you can understand, um, you know, how they experienced the course and, and how they felt about it. Hey, Dennis, are you there? I'm doing good. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Let All me right. get Ruby on here very briefly. Hey, hey, Ruby, how are you? 
Hey, Gil, how are you? Hi, Dennis. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Hi. So I wanted to bring both of you guys on the webcast and kind of just give people an overview of how you experienced the, uh, the course, um, how you felt about it, um, what you felt like you, you took away from the course. Um, Dennis, I know you and I met in person here in Florida, um, and you told me how you got into medical tourism, but can you just take a few minutes to share with the audience how you got into medical tourism? And then Ruby, if you could follow up with that. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I, um, <clears throat> I've been currently living down in, in Colombia, South America, and I saw uh, an opportunity with some quality doctors, and I found out how much they charge for their procedures, and it's really a fraction of what it is in South Florida, where, where I live. And I saw an opportunity for a lot of people that, unfortunately, because the cost of, of healthcare is so expensive that they have to go, they have to sacrifice the quality um, to get the, the healthcare because that's what they can afford. So I, f I saw an opportunity that if I can, I can make it affordable and make it easy for people to come down and get that high quality uh, care at a fraction of what it would be in, in back in back home in the states. And I, I saw it as a, a great opportunity to 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 do this business. Absolutely. And and also Ruby, if you could follow up with that, um, just you know, explain to us how you how you kind of got into the industry, what brought you to it. Yeah, well, I don't have a background in um, the medical business or the tourism business, but I had come to um, Medina, Mexico to visit family, and I was already doing unofficial dental tourism here for myself. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a routine doctor's appointment, and I learned that I needed a significant surgery, and I was uninsured at the time. Um, but I wasn't sure about having a procedure done in Mexico. So I went back to the States and I got some quotes and estimates and my surgery was going to cost thirty to forty thousand dollars. So I had no other option. I came back to Mexico and I found an amazing surgeon and a great hospital. And um, my surgery cost three thousand dollars. So I saved a ton of money. Yeah. And um, I was really impressed with with the care that I received and the outcome of the surgery. And I just thought, you know, there's got to be more people like me, especially in the U.S., that need a surgery and um, they shouldn't have to go into such huge debt to get it. Or maybe they can't um, get the surgery because they're uninsured like I was. So it was really just wanting to help other people. Absolutely. And one of the le leading causes of bankruptcy here in the U.S. is medical expenses. So, yeah, I mean, that's amazing that you were able to actually experience the industry as a patient. So now you kind of understand what patients go through and kind of what the savings they can get, et cetera, et cetera. So now that's that's great to hear. Um, also, the next question I want to ask you guys is give me a brief overview of you guys company. I know what it is, but the audience is they're not familiar with your brands. Maybe just yet. Maybe they are. But if you can, for people who, who don't know about your brand, Dennis, can you just go into a little bit, a uh, little bit of depth about your company and just give us a brief overview of what you guys provide and, and just an overview of the company? Yes, absolutely. Um, well, my wife, she's a, a doctor here in Colombia. And so we take the, the approach of, of como, uh, like a VIP concierge. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to offer like the, the cheapest or the most affordable. Um, we rather, as a company, us make less, but be able to give the clients that up ability to have the high quality uh, care. So that way they, they, that they feel satisfied and that they're, they're, they want to come back and invite their friends and family for, um, to come back for another procedure. So we do not only the plastic and dental, but also the eye, the hair implants um, and medical surgeries from, uh, from, we're getting into the cancer as well as the fertility uh, side of things. So, and we have other doctors that want to partner up, but we were, we're vetting them at the moment because we want to be, we pick them up at the airport. We have high quality um, hotels, mansions, and different apartments, depending on the level of, uh, of the, the people want to, to spend. We have bilingual nurses, all the medications. And while they're here, we, we take them on tours all around um uh, the, the the country depending on you know what they can do and that way that they're not just stuck watching Netflix while they're recuperating that they can have a great like a vacation at the same time no no that's impressive and also Ruby if you can give us a brief overview of what uh, what your company does you know what you guys specialize in etc yeah so Medida Medical Tourism um, we're in Medida Mexico it's the safest city in Mexico um, mm -hmm. and it's close to the beach it's 
a jewel of a place. It's got a lot of archaeological sites, haciendas. It's uh, it's like you step back in time where you're in the downtown uh, with all the architect architecture. Um, there's the Mayan um, community here, so you know it's it's great to learn about other cultures, and um, it's also traveling with purpose. But uh, we work with uh, a cluster of um, hand-picked uh, medical team that are the best in their field. Um, mm -hmm. As we vet doctors and surgeons and dentists and onboard them, we have a whole process that um, we use the contracts that we you provided us. Um, mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we have the best of the best here in Merida. We're looking at hospitals. Um, every year we get more in more uh, new private state-of-the-art hospitals. Um, Merida is gearing up to be like the medical tourism hub of all of Mexico because of its safety and state-of-the-art hospitals. Um, and then of course we teamed up with the best in the field of uh, great tourism companies. They'll do everything, um, you know, picking you up from the airport, um, They'll ask you what you want your Airbnb stocked with and go and do that for you. They'll take you shopping, out to dinner, um, museums, just, um, and we have boots on the ground here. So we have a team here on the ground if you need anything or in case anything goes wrong, you lose your passport, um, just, you know, anything. Um, so we're here to support our patients. No, perfect, perfect. And then also, I want to ask you guys, what what uh, made you guys decide to get certified? What was the motivated factor behind you guys taking the certification initially? Uh, well, I guess uh, I, I for me it was the credibility that that was that was huge. I wanted to be able to show that this isn't like a hobby, that we're a real company, that we have uh, we have you know a team here that it's we're, we're you know we're certified in, um, and and we have a legitimate business in the U.S. and in Colombia, so that the the patients feel that that you know this is this is legit, and so that was just uh, on our website something we really wanted to be able to showcase, and that way people feel more comfortable uh, wanting to to work with us. Absolutely, and then Ruby, you as well. Well, yeah, I wanted to get certified. I wanted to go through the course and just learn everything that I you know I didn't know, and um, I wanted to make sure that I knew what the patients expected maybe some of their fears and uh just you know learn how to take care of them before the trip during the trip after the trip um and like dennis said i wanted that credibility i wanted to uh, make sure that um, my patients know that i took the time and spent some money to take this course to be certified so i could take better care of them um and you know uh also, I think it just sets me apart personally from my local competition here. I haven't seen on anybody's websites or social media that they've been certified by any program. So I think, um, you know, that'll set me apart. Absolutely. No, I definitely agree with that. Investing in yourself, uh, uh, prospects definitely look at that to make sure you're certified, making sure you have that credibility. So I agree with that. Um, also, do you feel like it, it met your, uh, your expectations as far as what you were trying to achieve taking the, the, the course? Uh, did it, did it uh, meet your expectations as far as your learning goals, um, you know, things of that nature? Uh, yes, absolutely, it did. I was, uh, I, I was surprised with a lot of the stats, um, <clears throat> so many things I didn't know, and uh, I'm really glad that I took the time to invest in the, in the course to, to help me learn and to you know help me min um, minimize the risk from not saying oh I, I didn't know and then you know so with everything you taught there it helps protect us especially the contracts that was one of the main things that I it really intrigued me because I didn't have to go and hire an expensive attorney and and have them you know write all this stuff up and at the same time not knowing if the attorney really knows about the medical industry tours uh, tourism industry and uh, so this was a, a big a big factor for us. Absolutely. And then also, Ruby, if you can expand on that, if, if, if you like. Yeah, so um, this medical tourism business course definitely answered the questions that I had, but there was so many um, topics on there that I hadn't even thought about. Um, you know, I really wanted to reduce 
uh, my liability. And I just learned so much on the course. Um, it taught me my responsibility as a facilitator. Um, so just everything that I, you know, that a patient would expect from me. Um, again, like Dennis said, learning the stats, you know, that kind of got me pumped up because I'm like, oh my gosh, like look at all of these other services that we could team up with and hotels and tour guides and restaurants. And um, I think the whole wellness tourism is, you know, it's going to explode. Um, I think people don't just want to go on, you know, booze cruises or partying in Cancun anymore. They want to travel with purpose and travel with meaning and mental health means so much. So I'm working on touring up with some wellness um, uh, tourism advisors here too. Wow. So it definitely met my expectations and more. Absolutely. And I think that's a great point you brought up. I mean, one thing we really try to emphasize in the course is how medical tourism facilitators uh, can maximize uh, their profits when, when they're building the business. Right. Because the bigger your business is, the more patients you can help, the more clients you can obtain and help. Um, so, yeah, we try to focus on, uh, you know, different ways that you can you can increase your revenue on an annual basis. So, yeah, that's a good point you brought up there as well, Ruby. Now, I, I know both of you guys said there's, there was a lot of information in there, a lot of stats. Uh, do you feel like it was easy to follow as far as the course? And, and Dennis, I'll follow. Uh, uh, I'll start with you. Do you feel like it was easy to follow along in the course and easy to obtain information? Yes, definitely. It was. It was. I, I've done a lot of studying and a lot of courses, and and this was this was uh, very easy. The flow, um, the way it was all structured, was was very easy to learn. So uh, I was thankful for that. I didn't have to keep going back and repeating and repeating. It was very very clear and to the point. Definitely. And then Ruby, if you'd like to expand. Yeah, well, Dennis said he, you know, took a lot of courses. I personally didn't find a lot of courses. Maybe, you know, there's a, a, a few that I, I saw and I did get some books um, and, you know, they were boring or they got really, really in depth into, you know, the medical field. I felt mm -hmm. like I had to have some type of medical degree to read these um, books, but um, your the medical tourism uh, business course was it was in layman's terms. It was easy to understand. Um, I like the step by step process, um, and it wasn't boring because there was videos, there was charts, um, and the whole sequence was just really impressive. Definitely, I was I was going to ask you guys what what part of the course you guys found most valuable, but you guys you know pretty much laid out a lot of different uh, parts on that. Um, so I, I think that the, the viewers will be able to understand, you know, what, what you guys found the most valuable. Um, I want to go more into the uh, facilitated gold membership because both of you guys are facilitated gold members and you guys have both been facilitated gold members for a while. So I kind of just want to get your feedback on that as well. Um, I know you guys got it with the uh, with the course. Um, do you guys feel like the contracts, the patient leads and the other resources we provide, do you guys feel like that's valuable to your company and helping you grow it? Absolutely. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. That that's that's honestly one of the, the main reasons that I, I signed up was because of the of those resources. Um, I thought that that was very 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 useful and um, uh, not having to reinvent the wheel in a sense. And then the new business that's it's it's an emerging business. It's not something that's been around for you know 100 years. So you can just go and, and and quickly check it out. This is something that's new. So to have that type of um, resources and feedback in the communication. Uh, with you was invaluable. I really appreciate that. And then and Ruby as well. Yeah, well, Dennis hit on a good point. Um, this medical tourism isn't new, but it's not a mainstream business. There's not a lot of resources out there, um, especially to, you know, getting these contracts, patient history forms, patient waivers. We've already started to use all of these tools and they're super helpful. And I'm telling you, just the you're going to save so much money. Um, you know, you would have spent whatever you spent on the course and more just trying to get attorneys and people in the medical field to help you make these contracts. Yeah. And, that, and that's kind of why I had a slide on the uh, uh, medical tourism facilitated contracts, because it's one of our most pro uh, popular uh, membership benefits. And it really can save you money. Both of you guys uh, touched on it. I mean, going out and getting, a, uh, getting an attorney. Uh, it's so expensive. And also there's not many attorneys that even know what medical tourism is. 
Um, so they have to figure out the industry before they can even work on the contracts for you. We already have them pre-made, ready to go. Um, you know, facilitators are already using them. Both of you guys are using them. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's a good point. Um, also, I wanted to ask you guys about this, and Dennis, I think you kind of touched on it already, but I just want to, you know, go into more detail. You know, how do you guys feel the line of communication is between myself, our staff, and you, and yourself, uh, as far as as far as communicating and helping you guys grow the business? I thought it was it was great. You know, I had direct access uh, through the. I, I love using WhatsApp and, and and email, and I can pick up the phone and call you. And then we even met in person. When I yes. was there, so so that was uh, that's you know that's 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 great. So that way, if I had any questions or any doubts or anything, you were always there just quickly, and you got back to me pretty fast. So uh, that's that's extremely important. Definitely, and, I, and I'm going to be with you here going forward as well. Yeah, we and we do use WhatsApp a lot. That is true. Um, and and Ruby, what about yourself? Well, I haven't had the pleasure to meet you in person. Maybe I'll invite you down here to meet that both of you. You're welcome. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I was really impressed. Um, you know, you could tell that you are, you know, you enjoy that communication with people that have taken your course. Um, you're always available. Uh, you reply to all of my emails. We've had a couple of phone conversations. Um, you know, I've asked you some questions on the side, like about, you know, business insurance. And you got back to me. I was definitely impressed. Um, you could tell that you really enjoy what you do. I really appreciate you saying that. And to both of you guys, I really appreciate you guys uh, investing in yourself. Uh, I, I want to work with you guys all the way through this. I'm going to continue to work with you guys through this. And I really appreciate you guys sharing your experience uh, with other people as well so they can understand what you guys gained from the uh, from the certified medical travel agent course, as well as what you guys gained from the annual membership. Um, and if there's nothing else from here, um, I just wanted to end, end the podcast here or excuse me, in the webcast here. And I appreciate you guys for joining. Thank you so much. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Right. Bye. You are now. Bye bye.